In this video, I'm ranking my high credit limit credit cards from worst to best. By the end of the video, you'll know what each card offers and which ones you might want to avoid. Starting off with card number 10, we got the X1 Visa card. All I can say is that this credit card looks very cool in person because it's all metal, but that's about it. The main reason I got it was because back then, you could get approved for it without impacting your credit score, and they were giving huge credit limits, so I got it to increase my overall limit. Anyway, this card doesn't have an annual fee or foreign transaction fee, and it earns 2x points on all purchases, 3x points when you spend $1,000 per month, up to 10x points for every friend you refer to get the card, up to 5x points on certain purchases weekly, and up to 10x points at specific stores like Apple and Nike when you shop in the X1 app. You'll also get a broad range of travel and purchase benefits, including cell phone protection, trip interruption reimbursement, zero liability protection, and the list goes on. Now, the main reason I don't use this card is because the points you earn are valued low and the redemption options kind of stink. The card isn't horrible, but it's not the best if you're looking to maximize your earnings. I've kept it active because it's an older account with no annual fee and a $26,000 credit limit, which helps me maintain an overall low credit utilization, which obviously helps out my credit score. But if it weren't for that, I would have probably closed the account by now. Regardless, if you want to learn more about this card, watch this video after. Coming in at number nine, we have the Bank of America Unlimited Cash Rewards Card. I honestly got this card a few months ago after closing on my third home to specifically pay for home renovations over time and take advantage of its sign up bonus. What I like about it is that it has no annual fee, earns an unlimited 1.5% cash back on all purchases, and is currently offering a $200 sign up bonus after you spend $1,000 within the first 90 days of account opening, plus zero intro APR for 15 months on both purchases and balance transfers. Between all that and the crazy $20,800 credit limit I was approved for, this card was a perfect fit to cover all the big purchases I needed to make. Now I know that other cards offer higher cash back at home improvement stores, but they also limit how much you can earn. That's why I went with this card instead because I could earn a steady 1.5% back on everything without limits and most importantly, take advantage of his $200 sign up bonus. Overall, this is a decent flat rate 1.5% cashback card, but when I'm done using it for renovations, I honestly don't plan to use it much other than on small random purchases to keep the account active, which is why I've ranked it this low. To learn more about it, watch this video after. Coming in at number eight, we have the Built MasterCard. This might be one of the best credit cards released in a long time. One of its main features is that it earns points on rent payments on up to 100,000 points per calendar year without any transaction or processing fees. With any other credit card, you'll need to pay fees, which cancels out the points you're trying to earn, making this card a must have for renters. The card also earns 1x points on all purchases, 2x points on travel, and 3x points on dining. Plus you'll earn double points every first of the month. So 6x on dining, 4x on travel, and 2x on other purchases except rent on up to 10,000 points. So if you time your purchases right, you can earn a ton of points in these categories every first of the month. But keep in mind that you must use the card five times each month to earn points. In addition to earning points, you'll also unlock new benefits every first of the month, like transfer bonuses, credits, point accelerators, giveaways, and much more. But where this card shines the most is in the fact that it earns built rewards points, which can be redeemed for travel, rent or down payment for a house, fitness, bill collection items, shopping at Amazon, or you can even transfer your points to one of Built's transfer partners, including American Airlines, World of Hyatt, and many others. You can also earn loyalty status based on the number of points you earn per year, which unlocks a ton of other benefits, like the ability to earn points on your earned points, which is pretty cool. On top of that, it has no annual fee or foreign transaction fees, and it offers a ton of other benefits like trip cancellation and interruption protection, trip delay reimbursement, cell phone protection, and the list goes on. Now, just so you know, the bill card doesn't have a regular sign up bonus, but a lot of people, including myself, have received an email from them offering 5x points on all purchases for five days, up to 50,000 points. However, there's honestly no guarantee everyone will get this email. But if you do, that's a nice little bonus. 
Now I mainly got this card to increase my total credit limit and I succeeded after getting approved with a $10,000 limit. I wanted a good travel card without an annual fee and this one seemed perfect. But because I own a home and don't rent, my spending doesn't fully align with its rewards categories right now. So for now, I'm mainly using it as my dedicated dining card to earn points for future travel. Overall, if you rent and travel a lot, this could be the perfect credit card for you because you'll get 1x points on rent without fees and 2x points on travel, which you can then transfer to popular transfer partners. So if you'd like to learn more about this card, watch this video after. Card number seven is the Chase Freedom Unlimited. This is one of my oldest cards with an amazing limit of $21,000, but I rarely use it now because my spending has changed over the years and I've acquired better cards. Right now, this card is offering a $200 signup bonus after you spend $500 on purchases in the first three months from account opening and 5% cash back on combined gas station and grocery store purchases, excluding Target and Walmart, on up to $12,000 spent in the first year. That's an $800 value or more, depending on how you choose to redeem your points. You'll also get zero intro APR for 15 months on purchases and balance transfers. The card has no annual fee, plus it earns 5% back on travel purchase through Chase Ultimate Rewards, 3% back on dining, including takeout and eligible deliveries, 3% back on drugstore purchases, and 1.5% cash back on all other purchases. The best part is that these points come in the form of Chase Ultimate Rewards points, which are highly valued based on how you redeem them. For example, you can transfer your points to other Chase cards like the Chase Sapphire Preferred for a much higher value. The card also offers service and protection benefits like zero liability protection, purchase protection, extended warranty, and more, as well as partner benefits like the one shown on the screen. Overall, this is one of the best no annual fee starter cards in my opinion, especially if you travel, eat out, and shop at drugstores frequently. But because I have new cards that cover its reward categories, I now only use it occasionally on dining, which is why I've ranked it this low. Coming in at number six, we have the famous Apple card. Honestly, I got this card because I wanted to buy AirPods, a Mac, and an iPad for work. It gives a good cashback rate for Apple purchases and a useful interest-free program for financing Apple products, which I've used many times. I also really like how easy it is to request a credit limit increase on this card with no impact to your credit score. Actually, out of all my credit cards, this one has received the most credit limit increases in the shortest amount of time, increasing my credit limit on it to $22,500. So if you're not happy with your initial limit, you can give this a shot and see if they'll increase it with no harm to your credit. Anyway, the Apple Card is an all-metal card with no annual fee, foreign transaction fees, or late fees that lives on your iPhone in the Wallet app. It earns 3% cash back on everything you buy at Apple and select merchants like Uber, Walgreens, and Nike, 2% cash back on all purchases when you use Apple Pay to pay, and 1% on all purchases when you use a physical card to pay. Overall, the Apple Card is ideal for people in the Apple ecosystem who frequently buy Apple products, shop at the selected merchants, and enjoy the easy Apple Card interface. But I now only really use it when I shop at the 3% select merchants or when I need to buy Apple products, which isn't very often anymore. That's why I've ranked it this low. Plus, with the news of Goldman Sachs, the bank behind this card wanting to part ways with the Apple Card, I honestly wouldn't recommend anyone getting it right now until that's all figured out. But if you'd like to learn more about it, watch this video after. Coming in at number five, we have the Bank of America Customized Cash Rewards Card. Wow, that's a mouthful. I recently applied for this card to cover expenses for a home remodel and make the most out of its signup bonus and zero APR offer. Right now you can get a $200 cashback bonus after spending $1,000 in the first 90 days and zero interest on the first 15 months on purchases and balance transfers. Rewards wise, the card earns 3% cash back in the category of your choice, including gas and EV charging stations, online shopping, cable, internet, phone plans and streaming services, dining, travel, drugstores and pharmacies, or home improvement and furnishings. And you'll also earn 2% cash back at grocery stores and wholesale clubs. But keep in mind that there's a $2,500 limit on combined 3% and 2% cashback purchases each quarter. After that, you'll earn a steady 1% unlimited cashback on all purchases. 
But what's really cool is that they let you change your selected 3% cashback category once per month, giving you flexibility and making it easier to adjust to your needs. To top things off, the card has no annual fee, your rewards don't expire, and it offers credit card protection benefits like fraud protection, account alerts, contactless pay, a way to check your FICO score, and much more. Overall, this card is a solid choice for anyone looking for a no annual fee cashback card with customizable rewards and an easy to hit sign up bonus. And it makes even more sense if you're an existing Bank of America customer because you could earn even more cash back through the Bank of America preferred rewards program. Anyway, I got approved for a whopping $15,000 credit limit on this card, which was way more than I'll ever use, but hey, I'm not complaining. But moving forward, once I'm done using this card for home renovations, I plan to use it as my go-to Costco card for groceries since it earns 2% cash back at wholesale clubs. And since Costco only accepts Visa credit cards, this card is gonna be of great value to me. Card number four is the Amex Blue Cash Preferred. This is the only card in my wallet that has an annual fee. I don't mind annual fees, but I usually like cards without them. But what's really cool about this card is that it doesn't charge you the annual fee in the first year, and after that, it's only $95 per year. At the time of recording this video, Amex is also offering a $250 sign-up bonus after you spend $3,000 in the first six months, which will be credited to your account in the form of a statement credit. You'll also get zero interest on purchases and balance transfers for 12 months. Rewards-wise, the card earns 6% cash back on groceries at U.S. supermarkets up to $6,000 per year, 6% on select streaming subscriptions, 3% on transit, including taxis, rideshare, parking, tolls, trains, buses, and much more, 3% on gas, and 1% on all other purchases. But I mainly use it as my dedicated grocery and tolls card. Beyond cash back, you'll get an $84 Disney bundle credit, a $120 Equinox credit, access to Amex offers, which are targeted bonuses or discounts from select merchants, and a ton of other benefits. Anyway, I was approved for this card with a $25,000 credit limit. But if you sign up for this card and you get a lower limit than expected, you can always try out the Softpo 3X American Express credit limit method to triple your limit. You can watch this video after to learn how that works. Overall, you honestly can go wrong with this card, especially if your spending aligns with its reward categories. To learn more about it, watch this video after. Coming in at number three, we have the City Custom Cash Card. This card has a very interesting reward system. I originally signed up for it to take advantage of its sign-up bonus and zero interest intro period for renovations on my second home. It has no annual fee and is currently offering a $200 sign-up bonus after you spend $1,500 in the first six months of account opening plus zero intro APR for 15 months on purchases and balance transfers. On top of that, it earns 5% cash back on your top eligible spend category each billing cycle up to the first $500 and 1% unlimited cash back on all other purchases. The 5% eligible categories are restaurants, gas stations, grocery stores, select travel, transit, select streaming services, drugstores, home improvement stores, fitness clubs, and live entertainment. How it works is that every month, the card will detect which category you spent the most in and give you 5% on that category up to $500. So the maximum you can earn in these 5% categories is $25 per month. After that, you'll get 1% on all other purchases. This card also comes with perks and benefits like MasterCard ID theft protection, zero liability protection, merchant offers from popular stores, and much more. Overall, I really like this card. I was approved with a $10,800 credit limit, and I personally use this card as my dedicated gas card since that's one of my highest eligible spend every month, and in return, I earn a nice 5% back in that category. If you wanna learn more about this card, watch this video after. Coming in at number two, we have the Discover A Cashback card. This is one of my favorites because it covers a lot of different categories year round. The best part is that it doesn't have an annual fee or foreign transaction fees, so you can use it abroad. Plus, as a sign-up bonus, they'll double all the cash back you earn in your first year without limits. So if you earn $300 in cash back, they'll match that and give you another $300. 
You'll also get zero interest for 15 months on purchases and balance transfers. This is super useful if you're planning to make a big purchase or if you'd like to transfer another card's balance to this one and pay less interest. The card also earns 5% cash back on up to $1,500 in different categories each quarter, like grocery stores, restaurants, gas stations, and more. But keep in mind that they do cap it at $75 cash back per quarter, which adds up to $300 per year. And after that, you'll earn an unlimited 1% on everything else. Anyway, for the first quarter of 2024, the 5% categories are restaurants and drugstores, once again on up to $1,500. I'm personally using it as my dedicated eating out card, but let me know below which one of these two categories you find most valuable this first quarter. Overall, this is one of those cards I think almost everyone should have, because I can almost guarantee you'll find value in its 5% categories year round. But if you want to optimize the amount of cash back you earn, you should honestly consider using another card for spending outside of these categories so you can earn at least 2% cash back. A flat rate 2% cash back card like the SoFi card or City Double Cash card will get the job done. Anyway, I was approved for this card with a 10k credit limit, which is more than enough for my needs and I have no complaints about it so far. To learn more about this card, watch this video after. Coming in at number one, we got the SoFi credit card. What makes it stand out is that I can use it anywhere and earn a solid 2% cash back on all my purchases without limits. On top of that, it doesn't have an annual fee or foreign transaction fees. Recently, they've added new perks where the card earns an unlimited 3% cash back when booking travel through the SoFi travel portal, along with a sweet 10% or more savings on select hotels and travel activities. So it might be a great option for those who travel frequently. For a limited time, you can also get a $50 sign up bonus when you sign up for the card using my link in the description, and you'll earn 3% cash back on all purchases in the first year on up to $12,000. That's over a $400 value in the first year of getting this card, so make sure to take advantage of that limited time offer. The SoFi card also packs in some valuable benefits like fraud protection, ID theft protection, cell phone protection, free credit score monitoring, and the list goes on. Anyway, I was approved for this card with a $9,000 credit limit, and I use it every single day to pay for things that fall outside the categories of my other credit cards. What I love most about it is that I don't have to juggle different categories each month. I know that using it will always earn me 2% cash back. Sure, there are other credit cards out there that offer higher rewards, but when comparing it to other 2% cash back cards, this card is my go-to and always gets the job done. You can learn more about it by watching this video next. Anyway, let me know in the comments what you guys think about these cards, if you have any or if you would have ranked them differently. And if you made it this far into the video, comment the word rank so I know who my loyal besties are. By the way, I've left some limited time bonus offers down in the description for those of you that are interested in learning more about these cards or signing up for them. Using those links really helps out the channel, so it's a win-win. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to watch these other ones next where I rank all my credit cards from worst to best and rank my three bank accounts from worst to best.